everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Game Art Talk podcast. Louis Thompson is my guest today. Hey, Louis. Happy to meet you. Hey, mate. How you doing? Nice to, nice to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Yeah, we, we had quite a quite a run through to get this date and time fixed. So uh, we're happy to 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 uh, start this now, right? It's finally happening, mate. It's finally happening. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. So, Louis, you are a prop artist working for Cloud Imperium Games at the moment, right? So give me some other information from your side. Awesome. So, yeah. So um, when I originally started in the industry, um, I joined Ubisoft uh, as an environment artist, but I actually joined on the weapons team. So um, about Ubisoft, it's kind of like some, some of the studios, they kind of mix the roles up a bit. So... Um, some of the studios have like a dedicated weapons role and some of them just categorized under environment art. But during my, pretty much most of my time at Ubisoft was focused entirely on uh, weapon art. Um, and then I recently moved back to the UK. Uh, I think it was, uh, October last year, um, like in the height of the pandemic and, uh, joined as a prop artist at Cloud Imperium. So, um, majority of my experience is in weapon art pretty much. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay so uh, let's speak about the, the 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 change for you so why did you move from weapon art to prop art when i look when i look at your portfolio on our station um there is no it's just guns galore not one, isn't it <laughs> not, not, not one single weapon in it so yeah let me know why did you kind of switch from weapon to props it's not that huge of a of a change but it's it's a change yeah it's um one of the main things, um, so when I was doing weapon art, I was out in Romania um, at Ubisoft in Bucharest. And um, with the, like, one of the decisions behind swapping was um, being out in a different country when you're, like, the, the only foreign guy, like, on your team. Um, it, it, it could be quite daunting. Um, and being away from family and stuff like that can be quite challenging as well. So um, that was, like, the primary reason why I moved. Um, but okay. also because I got very, very, um, settled in, in weapon art at, at Ubisoft, like it was, it was great and I loved working on it, but, um, it was a lot of, you know, we made a lot of guns and it was kind of a lot of the same process. Um, and one of the, one of the things that was interesting about, uh, what we did there was, uh, the material work for Ghost Recon, um, it was very kind of limited because of how many weapons were in the game. So, um, for example, there was like, I think there was like 74 or something different unique weapons. Um, mm. and they were all built so that you could kind of change the materials out and, uh, as a whole, rather than uniquely textured stuff. Um, so our, our mm, role okay. was very much creating the, the models for them and not much material work. Um, so I think what I kind of wanted to do when I moved to prop art was kind of diversify the modeling a bit more and, and explore, um, not just weapons, but, um, other, other types of, uh, props and, and, um, objects, um, and venture into stuff a bit more like organics and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you are already in the process of, of like ditching into the prop art, right? Yeah, so I, I mean, I love, don't get me wrong, I love guns, I love my weapon mm. art, like, a lot, but um, it's more of a personal thing at home now, um, so for for my daily job, yeah, it's not it's not weapons anymore, but I'm, I'm taking a long dive into into doing lots of different cool sci-fi stuff, and oh, okay. one of the things that I love about um, doing the, the prop art at Cloud Imperium is I get to... I get to do a lot of design work as well, which is really, really far out my comfort ah, zone. Mm -hmm. um, as you can imagine, like working on weapons, it's like, you know, you've got the reference images of the real world weapons and it's, it's great because you've, you've got everything you need there. Um, but when it's, when it's for an entirely new universe, it's like, it's like, it's mad because you're, you're having to think about things that you never would think of on a site that already exists. Right. Because people yeah. that make weapons, they've like, it's already been designed to, to fulfill a purpose or mostly yeah exactly yeah. so um that's I'm, that's something i'm really loving about the switch also is it's a lot of design work as well and having to think uh, about how the the object works and stuff like that okay so you're starting from scratch so so to say yeah exactly um, sometimes yeah sometimes sometimes you get some cool concepts sometimes it's completely mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. scratch it's it's very varied 
compared to what I'm used to. So I, I think that's what I'm really enjoying. It's just lots of lots of exciting challenges to take on. So you wouldn't say that you kind of get bored from weapon art. So it was more like a personal decision moving back into the or in, into your country and getting the job at Cloud Imperium. So I'd say so. Yeah, I think I got very yeah. like I, I love weapons so much. Like um, I, I've like. When, since I've moved back, I've started doing like clay pigeon shooting and stuff like that at home. Mm. Um, but yeah, it, it's very much like uh, I got kind of in a routine in Romania. So I was very kind of comfortable with the workflow and what I was doing. And uh, it was kind of a big leap away from that to try and develop my skills in other areas. So I think it's, yeah. it's personal, but also to challenge myself. Okay. Okay. So um, let's speak about your workflow a bit more. Um, I see you have some personal stuff also in your in your portfolio. I assume these would be like working for first person. Um, and Ghost, you did stuff for Ghost Recon. Um, how is the workflow different when creating weapons for third person compared to first person? Awesome. Is yes. there any difference? No, not really. I think um, my, my mentality when I'm at home is... Um, very much do what I can't do when I'm at work. <laughs> so I, I mm -hmm. when I'm at home and I'm modeling, I, I literally, I, I, as long as my computer can run the model, like I don't care about poly count when I'm at home because I just want to make something that looks really, really nice. Um, I think my, my latest two personal pieces were to focus on my texturing. So like when it comes to stuff like texture budget, I end up just like, I don't spend as much time on the UVs and I'll, I'll just like kind of make sure everything looks good rather than is optimal just because it's more of a, a passion thing for me. When I, when I can post mm -hmm. something up and it, it, it looks good at the end, I'm really happy. Um, yeah. The Blackbird looks super cool. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. That one was like a really, really awesome project. Cause, um, I tried to kind of with that one, it was, um, so like I wanted to do like an AR, but I wanted to do one that didn't have like, loads and loads of reference and that's the one that i found and that's where i practiced doing my boolean workflow a bit more and getting good with mm -hmm. that and that was that was a lot of fun a lot of pain as well but a lot of fun <laughs> yeah this is like perfect for booleans when looking at the structure of it loads of cutouts lots it's... of cutouts and edges that need some yeah it cool. just looks great as well i i i kind of yeah. like uh some of the ar designs i'm not really a big fan of but that one just caught my eye and i i was like i have to do it i have to do it but yeah compared to um to third person you know in in it, for ghost recon it was uh it was it was really strange because it's like when you when you were creating the weapons it's kind of like uh you're creating them because we, we we have um, a system called the gunsmith in ghost recon Mm -hmm. uh, basically um it's like a gun customizer you, you might have seen it already but um basically in the menu you pretty much have a first person weapon in the menu when you're customizing the weapon oh, um mm -hmm. and then when you go into the game it turns there's there's also a second model which is like a third person model which is more optimized so like mm -hmm. uh we, we the way our workflow worked was we'd create like a like a mid poly version almost which would be the one that's shown in the menu and then it would switch to the third person when you left the menu. So I kind of did a hybrid of both of them, like oh. actually in production, which was like pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so when it comes to textures, um, are you using lots of um, mirrored faces or mirrored UVs better said? Um, so at, like uh, I imagine at a lot of places that would be the case. And like when I joined, I thought that would be the case also, but um a lot of the time on the ghost recon stuff we wouldn't do that because um we had a lot of i'm trying to think of examples of it we had a lot of situations in the past where like uh someone had mirrored something and we'd come to create a, a unique texture or skin for it later um uh -huh. and it just like because it's mirrored it just didn't work very well um so as a kind of rule for that we don't really try and mirror uv islands and stuff like that um the way we get around it though um because of the way the gun splits apart and stuff all of our attachments and stuff are on separate like uv sheets so for example um like uh if you had a magazine 
Uh, so the main the main body of the gun, the receiver, would be like one texture, and then you'd have uh, the stock, which would be a different one. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the barrel, um, all the parts that would split apart in the gunsmith would be their own separate texture. Um, okay. And that's how we got around the kind of... Because you can imagine if... Uh, because of the amount of customization in the game, you imagine you had like an AR and it was all in one texture and then you take away the stock. You know, if you're using one 4K and then you're taking away parts of the gun and replacing it with another texture that's using like another 4K or something, you'd you'd have like uh, so many textures mm. loaded in and it would yeah. be like, oh, the tech artists would cry at night. Like, <laughs> it would yeah. just be terrible. <laughs> but yeah, it was... Um, that's how that's how we do the textures pretty much. Um, okay, and then you just need to make sure that the texture density is right for all the different attachments. Exactly, yeah. So we just have uniform texture density on stuff. Okay. Um, okay. And yeah, that's how we get around it really. Um, okay. So yeah. So let's speak about elitism in weapon art. So uh, I listened to other podcasts where this is like a cool topic. Um, I want just wanted to speak with you about it. So as I, I saw you only have weapons in it. Um, <laughs> I I thought you were the right the right dude for for asking this question. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I I listen to like I've listened to a few uh, other podcasts as well. And like, mm. it seems to be a topic that comes up a lot. Um, I've experienced this like, First hand, I mean, you could go on my art station and look through some of the comments. There's like a, I, I have a very different take on it though. So, okay. so usually like, you know, people like elite about weapons and like people get really angry at each other and they're like, oh, this is crap. You know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it can be a very negative experience for, for some people. But for me, um, I had the same thing happen to me, but it actually ended up like motivating me to get better at what I did. So, um, Working at Ubisoft is great. Uh, making the models is great. But um, I got feedback on some of my work um, in quite a rude way. Um, <laughs> from, um, I, oh, well, I won't name and shame anyone. But yeah, I, I think a lot of the weapon artists will know who this particular person is. Um, yeah, but yeah, I do. <laughs> you already know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, um, I... I we don't obviously um for, for a lot of the weapons we don't do uh our own textures on the weapons team for them so we have like uh these textures that are, are kind of universal for all the guns so you have like the camo patterns and like the the standard gun metal stuff and the standard plastics um and then we basically create a like a normal map um from our high, high poly bake which would drive the the wearing and the dirt and stuff on the mm. guns um yeah just so that you know we don't have time to unique texture like 74 different unique weapons in a production cycle it's just like that's an insane amount of work and we had like yeah. quite a small team it was like i think i think the the most people we had was like probably eight people including tech art so not a huge amount of people and there's a lot of guns to get through, a lot of variants, a lot of attachments, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, the, you know, I, w- I remember where I did my art dump when the game came out, and I was like really proud. Our, our entire team was proud because we did we did some really cool work, and you know, yeah. I worked with and some I, amazing people. And I assume in a pretty 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 tight deadline, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, I mean, you know, game production is never a a chill out experience it's uh, yeah. <laughs> you get very heated and stuff but yeah we, you know we got to the end of the project and it was like a really nice moment to kind of appreciate what we we're going through um and then yeah like uh i i remember this guy came up and he was like you know we are your texturing's horrible it was it was not very constructive let's put it that way um and yeah. you know it, it hit our team pretty hard we we're all pretty like upset about it um you know um, I actually like really, really looked up to this person as well. I thought like their work was fantastic and, and it was very inspirational for me when I was actually at university learning about how to create art. Um, and yeah, it, it, it hurt. <laughs> it, was, it sucked. And it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. Yo, why can't people point at, you know, why can't people be constructive? It doesn't have to be rude. Um, but yeah, like that happened. Um, I was very upset and angry for a while, but then it kind of like changed in my head. I was like, you know what? Like I shouldn't, I shouldn't let this like upset me. I should try and turn it around and kind of make it, you know, a force for good. Right. So, um, that's what 
actually started my two latest personal pieces. Um, my weakest point was texturing because um, I, you know, during my day job, I was constantly just doing the modeling side. So I didn't really have much time to work on my texturing. Um, I would occasionally do stuff outside of work, but I wasn't really motivated at the time. Um, and then this, this guy comes along um, and that was kind of the turning point. It made me think, okay, like, you know, I can use this. Maybe, uh, you know, it actually motivated me. Um, and that's where my personal work came from. I, I, I really tried to up my texturing game and, and prove, you know, cause when someone says mean stuff to you in your head, you know, it may not be true what they're saying and it may just be their opinion, but in your head, you're still kind of sat there thinking, you know, oh shit, like, <laughs> yeah. maybe they're right. Maybe I'm, I'm bad at my job or maybe I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not a good artist. And that's kind of yeah. what drove me to, to crack on and work on it. It would be, it would be kind of interesting if, uh, I'm not that sure, but if this is something that comes across also in others, um, in other categorizations like character art or environment art um i'm not that aware but do you have any idea uh i'm not so sure i think what i think what the big distinction with weapons is that like you know it's a very very huge passion for certain people and mm -hmm. um i i don't know i'm not, not not to detract from character art or environment art but i feel like weapons are kind of you know there's there's so much like reference for it online like actual engineered drawings and like you know people people own them in real life and they know exactly how they work and if there's like one detail off you know if that person's fired them they're like they they are i i feel like it you know people get very very into guns very very into guns and you know with a character for example like you know everyone everyone's very very different whereas i don't know like an ak-47 will like always be an AK forty seven, right? I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. People, people, <laughs> people love guns, man. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah, and also there are like so many, so many details on it, and it's a su such a hardly used, um, yeah, thing that it, yeah, it has so many details on 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 it that it's so hard to like really break it down with a texture and that's where the where the real good weapon artists come along you know yeah i, I think that's um you know there's there's some mad uh mad web artists out there i mean linus yeah. for example linus stuff is uh linus oh my Ole. god <laughs> yeah Ole is, uh, all of the war dog team oh my god like oh yeah they they are just beasts um it, but it brings a tear to my <laughs> pretty funny because like when you speak with Ole about it um uh, he has a, a a different approach in it like it's kind of like we have it so he says it's it's game art it needs to look cool and it, if it looks cool it's all right it doesn't need to be realistic and accurate and like 100 correct and like to to real life gun definitely i think like I, I agree with him in a lot of ways because um I, I mean uh, the guy the guy's amazing like <laughs> I just um everything he puts out is fantastic and, and yeah like to the average person right no one you know no one's gonna no one's gonna know it looks that good nope. and it looks never you know it looks real it may not wear the same way or you know but it's 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 always that that one crowd that's like you know been shooting a lot or you know knows the weapons that you know they get very angry about it and it's like nah like as long as it's you know it represents the real thing right it may not wear yeah. the same but i mean it's yeah <laughs> it's just people yeah people man people just yeah. need to be nicer to each other uh, yeah and like give good feedback or give um feedback that is like healthy exactly yeah like um, not just say oh here we go again this is looking shit oh yeah Wow. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, that's. I think a lot of people don't know the distinction between good feedback and and just being rude, and it shows sometimes. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I, I mean, like this guy that went in on me, like there, you know, I got, I got one bit of like there was like one bit of feedback uh, on one on one work 
which was actually productive. And I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. Like, I know I could, you know, I could, I could know I can go forward now. Um, and then on the others, you know, sometimes, um, you know, I'll, I'll go for art station and someone will comment on something and, and they'll, they'll almost like berate the artist or take the piss out of them. Um, you know, cause maybe they don't like a detail on the weapon they've created mm. and it's just like, come on, like, you know, give them feedback on the design or whatever, but don't like, don't bully them or make fun of it. Like, it's just not really healthy. Right. It's yeah. We yeah. should all be encouraging each other. And, you know, I think everyone, like every artist kind of struggles like at some point or another with whether, you know, the imposter syndrome, whether they're good enough mm -hmm. and it's, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I mean, I do, um, you know, I've talked to other weapon artists that do as well. And it's just like, everyone's going through the same struggle. So everyone should support each other. Yeah. And everybody should build each other up. Like definitely yeah. Not just tear them down. Yeah. All right. So Lewis, um, how did you break into the games industry? So what was your first job? How did you apply? <laughs> I don't even know how I got in, mate. I really don't even know. <laughs> okay. I was, I got hella lucky. So like, uh, I finished university and my entire, like my entire portfolio was like environment art because like, I remember I did weapon art during like my second year for a little bit. And I remember like having a conversation with like one of my lecturers and they were like, you know, there's not that many weapon roles, like are you sure you want to do this? Because like weapon artists are usually like, they've got to have really, really, you know, shit hot work. It's got to be like amazing because there's so limited roles. And, you know, I'm not the most confident person. I think when I came back from Romania, I'm, I'm way more confident now than I was back then. Um, but yeah, I kind of had that moment where I was like, okay, do I really want to be doing weapon art? Because I'm, I'm really limiting my opportunities, I think, um, compared to, Because as a graduate, right, you're looking at um, the kind of amount of jobs, I think, rather than, you know, that there'd be like, I think there was one, one weapon art job that I remember applying for, which was for Crytek. I think it was on Hunt Showdown. And that was like the only one I can remember from the time. Like there was no others. I was like, this is mm -hmm. insane. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I switched to like environment art and I did some environment art for a bit um that's all gone from my portfolio now because i i don't want to look at it anymore it makes me sad <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah but, um, when i when i first joined the industry i applied i had like a bunch of environment art and i had like i think i had one gun on my portfolio um so i i started applying everywhere uh and i was getting projections and no replies um and i think i got i got one interview so, so I had an interview with, um, a studio called red kite games and they wanted like a weapon artist, which was lucky. Um, but it was for like a mobile spec game. So I mm -hmm. went along to it and, um, I, I went to the studio for a day as part of the two week art test that they did. Um, and then I did the two week art test and then I got feedback from it that I'd failed it. And I was like, oh damn, like this is, this is, this feels bad. <laughs> this feels horrible um yeah I, it was it was because like i went into it and um i was i was i was not very aggressive with my optimization and stuff so my the weapons i made for it were like very very high poly compared to what they should be uh obviously they were looking for like a mobile kind of spec uh oh. type game well it wasn't it wasn't mobile spec it was um what was it i think it was like a it was like a third person one but it was the camera was really far out. It was like a third person side scroller. And yeah, my work was just like not optimized for that kind of spec at all. So they ended up going with someone else. Um, and then, yeah, I was just getting rejections all over the UK. And then uh, my friend reached out to me and said they were looking for artists in uh, Ubisoft in Romania. And I was like, like, hell yeah, I'll, I'll give that a try because I'd already applied for Ubisoft in the UK and they said no. And I was, and there were like, I think there was like 3000 people that applied for that job or something. And I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, <laughs> no wonder, <laughs> no wonder I didn't even get looked at. Like there's, there's so many talented people coming out of university now. And like my portfolio was just naff. It was really bad. Um, 
so yeah, I I, I tried um, applying at Ubisoft in Romania, and I actually I got through. Like I got through, did an art test. Um, it was like an environment art position. Um, I did the art test. I passed the art test. I had a bunch of interviews, and then yeah, they invited me out to Romania to come work for them. So that's when I jetted off, and that's how I joined. I found out on my very first day. I remember like being introduced to my boss, and I was like what are we working on? <laughs> Cause like he didn't, uh. we, he introduced me to everyone. Um, and then, yeah, he said, told me to like set up my computer and start working. And I was like, what are we working on? Cause I didn't even know what project it was. And he was like, Oh, you're going to be a weapon artist on, uh, what was ghost recon breakpoint at the time. And I was like, wow. I was like, no way. Cause I like, I literally changed, like I changed completely to environment art because I didn't think that there'd be any weapons jobs. And I mean, what are the chances that like you join a company as an environment artist and they turn around and they're like, you're going to be a weapon artist. It was, like a, <laughs> yeah. it was like a dream come true for me. It was like everything just fell into place and it was like perfect. And it was all because I had one weapon on my portfolio and they were like, oh, this guy must like guns. So that was how lucky I got. That's how I got in. And, you know, it's... And so you became a weapon artist uh, at Ubisoft. Yeah. Like that's the, that it, with, with, um, yeah, without, without wanting to become a weapon artist at Ubisoft. Exactly. Yeah. It was, it, it all just fell into place and it was really, really nice because, you know, the environment team's quite big. Um, but as a weapon artist, we had like a really small team. So we had like our own section in the credits, which was really cool. And I was like, you know, it was, it was like a little family. I love my Romanian co-workers so much. They like, they taught me so much and moving out there gave me the opportunity to like build my confidence up way more and stuff as well. So it was, it was fantastic. Okay, cool. That's a pretty, pretty cool story for starting, uh, starting in the video games industry. It's definitely like, an interesting way in, isn't it? Compared yeah, to, you know, compared, compared to other stories, right? Where it's so, so, so hard to get into it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of uh, people like, works so hard to get in and they earn their job which is great but like i literally like i don't think i've ever heard someone you know changing because they couldn't get the job they wanted and then applying for it and then getting it anyway it's like oh. yeah it's cool all right i also saw that you are um that you started a discord called zero to one space which is a pretty cool name by the way i can't take credit for that unfortunately oh my, my friend, unfortunately my friend um we, we, we were sat there and we were trying to like figure out a name and my friend ella was like we should call it the zero to one space and everyone was like what and we we're like oh because the zero to one texture space like it's like a pun <laughs> And the 3D yeah. artists would get it. And it's like, that's actually amazing. So yeah, that's that's how that stuck. Like, a lot of people come in and they're like, 021 space or 021 space. Mm. And it's like, no, uh, you're missing uh, no, the no, pun. No, no. <laughs> you're missing the pun. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. So why did you guys start the podcast, uh, the, podcast the Discord? Uh, what was the uh, in intention? like? Yeah, so... Um, Basically, when we were at university, we ran, um, we ran the, we had like a games course there and we ran the, the student uh, discord for the games course. We started that um, and that built up quite a lot of members over the time that we were there. Uh, and now it's like, I'm pretty sure it's like officially used now by the lecturers and stuff. And like, there's hundreds of members and stuff like that and people from industry. Um, and we use that as a way of getting kind of... Um, kind of bridging the gap between the students and the industry because you know when you're a student it's it's terrifying like someone will come in and, and, and do a talk and you know everyone's like gathered around them like they're a celebrity and it's like wow this is someone that's actually made it like this is someone that's doing mm -hmm. what they love for a living yeah. it's, it creates like a you know this weird anxiety you know where they're gonna bite your hand off if you try and talk to them and stuff and it's, you know, <laughs> yeah we, yeah we so we started the university one like to try and you know give students a place to share their work and for you know the industry people to pop their heads in and give feedback and i kind of bridge that gap a bit and help people out i know for a fact that i had like i had a lot of like anxiety when talking to people from industry but i i tried to fight for it and this was my way of kind of you know 
kind of helping myself. So a lot of the stuff I did at university was to like help me get through my, my like confidence issues. Um, and you know, it's, I'm lucky that it also helped other people. So, um, we did that and that was great. But when it came to the point where we were in the industry, it kind of felt like it, it felt weird still running the student one because we weren't students anymore. So we kind of passed that discord on, um, to like the next generation of students. Um, and now there's like a, I think there's one industry member that, that still does it. There's a couple of lecturers and then a few students from each year. Um, and they run that now, but yeah, we kind of like, we, we, we try and there's a few of us scattered about in the different servers, like the dynasty server, the experience point server, mm -hmm. chamfer zone one, uh, you know, there's, there's quite a lot of them now. Um, but the problem, you know, the, the thing that was quite hard about that is because they have so many members, um, it can be really hard to kind of join in and kind of, you know, uh, get to know people better, I feel. Um, and I know a lot of my, my friends and like, uh, like kind of colleagues, like felt the same. So we kind of like, we were like, you know, we should just make our own and, and see where it goes. Like, because. I don't know. I try. I remember for like two months. I think I tried like talking in the dynasty one, and I just remember like I I I type, and then my message would just be buried under thousands and thousands of messages from like yeah, all crazy. these you know all these other people, um, which is fine. I mean, they're doing some mad stuff. I mean, the dynasty one, like I know they're doing like a a digital um, almost kind of like conference thing, right? They've got like a few yeah. people doing uh, like um, talks and stuff, which is like awesome. Like I'm a big fan of Jeremy's stuff. He does like yeah. some awesome stuff for the community. Um, same with experience like, points. Yeah. A crazy, crazy community there. I yeah. Think it's, the, it's the biggest one and the biggest. And, and it's in, fantastic. In the whole games industry. We, I remember back at university, we used to, um, we, we ran like a, the Game Dev Society, our, our university. And I remember we used to put his, live stream on like every session we just have it running on the big screen um and like the members would like post their work into the critiques and he'd, he'd do it live on there and it was like a really really awesome thing because you know you know it's all well and good watching the live stream but like we were all physically there and like you know people from your class were like sharing their work live on this live stream in front of jeremy the god <laughs> And yeah. it, you know, it helped other people like overcome that fear of like putting their work forward. So that was like really awesome. And I, I think he does it in a, like we were talking about earlier with the feedback, right? He, he does his feedback in such a nice way where it comes across as really kind of constructive and positive and he'll highlight things that are good with your work and the areas you need to improve. And it just works really, really well. There's such a nice dynamic there. Um, yeah. and I, yeah, to go back to the original point, um, I think the zero to one space came from, we wanted to do something for the community again. Um, obviously we weren't at university anymore, so we didn't have the university student kind of there to support us. So we just started kind of building our own server with industry members that we knew. Um, we just kept inviting people in. Um, and it's kind of like, you know, it's not super, super active like these other communities, but it's, it's like home for us, I guess. Um, it's quite a nice little community we've got. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's just nice. Um, yeah, we still take part in the other ones. Um, but just not as much. It gets very, very crowded in the other ones, I think. So yeah, in, like the, the dynasty is crazy. And yeah. It's so big and so many people are in it. Like it's a, it's like a live stream chat. You have, you have the, yeah, the it's, it's just so much. Messages. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Lewis. Um, thank you so much for being my guest today. No worries. Thanks for inviting me. I, I really appreciate it. I was really surprised to get your message. I was like, wow. <laughs> I will put your information into the info box so people um, can check out your weapons and maybe some props in the future. Definitely. Yeah, I'll definitely be posted later on. Definitely. And yeah, take care. Thanks very much, mate. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.